This lens is a Canon FT 55mm f1.2, installed on a EF mount camera without any issues. The lens setup will cost you less than $200, compared to the FT price tag of modern lens. Using 3D printing, I was able to manufacture the adapter that made this possible. As far as I'm concerned, this is basically like having a replicator from the Star Trek series. This project was extremely satisfying, so I have decided to give away this very lens to one of my subscribers. To enter the giveaway, all you need to do is comment and subscribe. The winner will be randomly selecting as soon as you reach the milestone of 1000 subscribers. So please help me out to reach this milestone. Just subscribe if you don't want to comment, but at least if you comment, you can win something. So why not? It's free. I know, just, just do it, just help me. Ah, stop begging. Hand, you know? Let's get to the point. The FT mount was the lens mount for the Canon reflex camera produced before the autofocus era. After doing some research online, I found out that it was possible to purchase a conversion kit. But unfortunately, it cost more than the lens itself. And a simple adapter wouldn't work because the FT mount has a shorter flange distance compared to the EF mount. What is the flange distance? The flange distance is the distance between the lens mount of the camera and the image sensor. The FT lenses have a flange distance of 42 mm. The EF mount have a flange distance of 44 mm. What does this mean? If you want to adapt the FT lens to a EF mount, we need to sink the lens closer to the sensor. Therefore, part of the FD mount will need to be removed completely by the lens, so we can use our favorite caliper to begin measuring and start the design process. Failed print, incorrect tolerance, and a lot of frustration. I have started with FDM, but I couldn't get the right tolerance. So I tried with resin, but they were too fragile. And the print continued to fail unless I had a huge amount of support, which gave me a terrible surface finish that impacted the tolerance. So what did I do? I decided to go back to FDM, this time using Bamboo Lab X1 Carbo. The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbo really impressed me. Lightning quick printing capability combined with unparalleled quality. A machine that now I consider a tool more than a hobby. I can achieve ultra fine 0.1 mm layer height without breaking a sweat or sacrificing in printing time. Oh guys, Bamboo hit the mark. Solving the printing problem after several iterations and test print, the design was finalized and I was ready to start the installation process. So the first step is to locate the two side opening and remove the screw from inside. Done that, we need to unlock the locking mechanism pushing gently in the retaining pin until it releases. Now rotate until we intercept the screw underneath with the holes on the top. Be aware of the retaining pin that might engage again in the process. Once removed the three screw, we are now able to completely remove the FD mount exposing the iris mechanism below. The next step is to replace the iris push only control arm with the 3D printer push pull version. All it takes is two screw. Make sure to insert the iris bracket inside the 3D printed arm like I show here. Screw firmly, but not too tight, or you will break it. Now we insert the 3D printer ring, making sure that the centering chamfer is facing up. 
and of course the flat side is facing the lens. Grab the EF mount making sure the alignment as shown. This is the EF locking mechanism to the body. There is only one way to line up with all the screw, as the distance in between them is not equal. I'll show you again. Take the screw removed from the top of the FD mount and reuse it for the EF mount. Again, firm but not too over tight. Remember, we are dealing with metal on fine plastic, not metal on metal. Too loose or too tight can also mess up your calibration later. Reason why I include three different sets incrementally 0.2mm more thick, plus shims to help you out to get it just perfect. Lastly, optionally, you can add the gear for focusing and iris. Just slide in place, pretty much self-explanatory. Be mindful that we did not de-click the iris. For you videographer, that will require an extra step. I'll link a video below to show how to do that. Anyway, easy peasy, we are done. And I was ready to move on the next phase, the calibration. The calibration, which is an accurate adjustment of the distance between the lens and the camera sensor, which affects the lens ability to focus to infinity. Poor calibration can cause the lens to focus beyond infinity or not to reach infinity at all, resulting in blurry image. So I printed some very fine spacer, also called shims. And by fine, I mean fine, 0.1 millimeter about a 3.9 tau for those using Imperial, which the harder part was actually removing it from the print bed without breaking it. But I got it done and I started experimenting. It's a bit of a tedious job because even the degree of torque applied to the small screw that holds the mount to the lens might affect your calibration. The whole process from start to finish took me two long weeks of work, cost me the price of a new prosumer 3D printer, various filament roll, raising bottle, a bit of mental sanity, my girlfriend definitely wasn't happy. All to prove myself that I could save $200 by not buying a perfectly fine conversion kit already available online. The good news is that now, thanks to the unpaid work of an Italian immigrant in Australia, it is possible for you to print your own conversion kit comfortably from home. Yay! Please consider supporting me in my useless mission. I share all my files on my Patreon. Wow. I just realized something. YouTubers are the basker of the digital age, always asking for spare change. Damn, that's deep. Well, thanks everyone. If you like this video, you will definitely want to check out how I adapted sunglass lenses to an instant 360 as a neutral density filter. Video here, or here, or here. Look it up. Ciao!